What's going on? Waiting for people to show up. So, just turn this on. Hang tight. Maybe somebody will put the actual start lesson time in the comments. So you can jump there. Usually at about 10 or 15 minutes in, we get, we get to the meat of the lesson. Um, let me make this larger. Um, I'm trying to make sure that you can still see my hands. Not necessarily my face. Left hand is important really here. So. It's a little too much light almost. I don't know. It's hard to get that just right. It's okay. You can see it in my glasses. It's shining on me. <laughs> this is a two-pager. So if you haven't gone to the... Uh, if you're not uh, a member of the Discord, um, let me grab that. You might want to join that. It's free. This is a, a join link. Um, hey, Bruce. Um, I'll pin this. And the, the Discord, uh, that's where I upload all the PDFs and screenshots and all that stuff for all the lessons, going back 209 or 208 lessons. Pepper Jack, this is review for Pepper, this kind of stuff. But uh, uh, remember, we learned, um, we learned uh, the F sharp last, uh, last week, so we should be okay. Now, where did I put my coffee? Oh, no. Wait a minute. Where's my coffee? Hold on. <laughs> I wish I had a pause button. So, I wish I had a pause button. The studio is such a mess. Oh my gosh. And I just got a ton more charts to play. This is all work from last week. <laughs> it's just like non stop, which is good. Life works. See, that was fun. That was for a TV show called Why Women Kill. <laughs> and my wife is a avid reader of murder mysteries. So I sleep with one eye open. All right. She knows a thousand ways to kill me and not leave a trace. Hey, John, what's going on in, in Louisville? I don't know if I'll be going back to Louisville. Sad to say, I found out last night that uh, our, my involvement, my, the, my, the, the person that hired me, he is uh, likely to not be involved anymore. So that means I'm not going to be involved in it, which is sad because we always had such a great time. Um, how do I take my coffee? Just cream and sweet and low. I have to bring my own sweet low now, though, because because um, um, Starbucks doesn't offer sweet low anymore. All right, so I got my uh, I got my Martin back. Beautiful look. They fixed the pick guard. Um, they didn't shim. I wish they'd shim the E string. I'm gonna. I, I may have them do that still. do that myself probably especially since there's no pickup in here it's really not that critical I just take the strings off which is a drag but I can capo I can loosen the strings capo take the pins out take the strings out add a shim on the top part because it's just the E string that's that's really buzzing so I can even see that it's dropping a little bit I think they did shim it a little bit but they kind of Good to see you. I'm going to say, Jaya, Jay, or Jacob, hello. Good to see you. 
your name looks new. Um, Alan Floyd, I've seen you before. You're not new. <laughs> I'm not new. So we're going to start making chords out of these uh, three strings. Um, and so if you downloaded and printed up um, the, you'll notice that on this page, I wrote the chord names at the end of the stave. At, every, at the end of every stave, I wrote the chord name. Um, and on the next page, I didn't write the chord names because I don't want you cheating. So um, the idea is that you're going to learn, you're going to try to read it. Now, I did make the second page, um, and you notice all the re double repeat signs everywhere. Um, I try to make it very musical so that, so as you're playing it, it makes sense. I didn't do just kind of some random chords. Uh, I could have, uh, but I did not. Joseph Finley, David Sillers, good to see you. Oh, uh, open D minor, that's nice. Um... <laughs> so, uh, Gary, is that uh, the, the open D minor? Is the, you just do bar? It's all minor chords in the song? Well, of course, it's easy to make D. You just put one finger down and you get a major chord, which is nice about open D minor. Um, that, that's why I don't understand, like, the open D and open G and those. The drag about those is that you don't, it's very, very difficult to make a minor chord. Um, and so uh, open D mi open minor almost makes more sense. I've never played with open G minor. I should maybe, but uh, I did a, a video on open D minor. Did I do some fun chords in open D minor or was that scales? I can't remember, but I did do a video on open D minor, I think. Oh, okay. No worries, David Siller. Sorry to sorry that your your dad is limited. That stinks. Your net, hopefully your net network will be back up. Holly, hey, good to see you, Holly. Now, here's another thing that one of the benefits to learning to read music, I think, it, well, for one thing, it gives you another, uh, see, my, I can't, my hand doesn't get in the screen here if I do this, uh, but it gives you another entrance into learning. You know, like I always tell you that you, there's like five, six different ways that people learn. And so I try to kind of incorporate as many ways to learn something as possible. Uh, music theory I'm talking about here. And so some people can just learn it. Some people need to see it on the keyboard. Some people can just memorize it. Some people need to hear it. Some people need to see it on like paper. Um, and I'm kind of, I like to see it on paper. And so for me, this is kind of a good way to start to see, oh, wait, okay. Oh, I see the notes in an E minor chord. Oh, I see... Oh wow! There's only one note difference. Oh, you don't, it's only a half step between E minor and C. Well, that makes sense because here's E minor and here's C. So there's that. Of course, every time I play that, I want to go here. I may have to look. Well, how do I do this? I, I just want to make sure you can see my hands when we start playing. Um, and so I kept this really, really simple, this lesson, in, the reg in regards to um, note duration. Everything on the first page is whole notes. Uh, I think everything on the second page, let me see, I'll pull it up. Uh, I think everything on the second page was half, half notes, right? And sometimes the half notes changed. Yeah. And sometimes the half notes didn't change. Uh, I put repeat bars on there just so you you just practice these four four uh, chord phrases. And a lot of these are uh, so kind of like exercises. Um, some of them are like um, uh, shoot, I gotta close that window. There we go. Um, some of them are, are harmonic studies, um, so they should make some sense. And um, again, you'll you'll start to I think you'll start to learn to read music as we as you start to read these. I think you'll start to get the hang of it. But um, I don't know. I think I'm going progressively. We're getting more difficult uh, now. Next week, the the thinking is I'll add another string. 
So now the question is, will I make the next lesson four strings or will I just do like three or two? I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm going too fast for you all. Um, yeah, James Bond is awesome. Of course, everybody knows who the best Bond is, but who's the second best Bond? I would say Daniel Craig. There's no question. Everybody agrees. 100% Every, of people agree that Sean Connery is the ultimate Bond, is the best Bond. There is no disagreement with that statement. <laughs> it's not like Ginger or Marianne. <clears throat> and that question is designed to tell you more about the person than, than they know. Um, yeah, so I did a half notes on the second page. Sometimes the chord doesn't change in a bar, and sometimes it does change within a bar. So it varies degrees, but I, I try to keep it even simple there. Like I think one of us. So you can easily memorize it. Um, which is the, which is the, which is the antithesis of reading, <laughs> okay? Um, and both are really necessary for music. You know what? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm okay. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit, but I think we're good. So um, we might want to do some review here. We could go back to last week's lesson, um, and if we just want to play uh, the first three lines together, we could do that, okay? Um, the first, the, just a reminder on the G string, we have G open, and at the second fret is A, and the G is the, is the second from the bottom line, and the A is the second from the bottom space, all right? And again, you'll notice that I wrote the letter names over just to start, but after that, I want you to not do that, and you can always print two copies, three copies, or whatever, if you want to uh, write letter names in. It's going to be a little bit more difficult with the chords. What you can do is you can write chord names in if you really want to try to do some harmonic study. You want to try to learn harmony a little bit better. Then you take the new lesson we, we have this week, take that second page and start writing the names of the chords over. But don't read that one. Read the one you don't write on because that way, it was always a drag when I taught kids and we had the book, like Alfred's Basic Guitar Method, and they would write the letter. And, well, now it's like you, almost like you need two books, one to do this little like quiz that you seem to want to, everyone wants to do. I, I did the same thing. And and two, a second book to do the actual sight reading. Because otherwise you're reading the letter names. You're reading the letters and not the actual chords, which is the temptation to do right here. Um, but we're going to do this anyway. So play G. Okay, there's G. Look at the letter name, though. Try not to look at the note name up on top. I mean, sorry, look at the note, not the letter. Okay, there's A. Okay. Uh, so bar bar five, G, A, to open B, that middle line, to C, second line from the spec, second space from the top, D is the second line from the top, E is the top space, F is the top line, G is above the top line. Okay. Next line down, bar nine, one, two, three, G major scale, G open. Second fret is A, open B, C, first fret, D, that second from the top line, top space is E, F sharp, <laughs> I almost messed up, G. Exactly. Uh, John says how to practice these all these PDFs on this music leading uh, reading for beginners series. I play you play the PDF, PDFs in my warm up using metronome, so I practice my sense of timing, music reading, and note locations, which is all really good. Um, <laughs> the other thing you can start to do, uh, one of the best ways to learn to read music is to write music. So you can start to make up your own lessons, make up your own melodies. The other thing is if this is baby talk for you, then play it up here, read it up here, or up here. Practice your reading up and down the fretboard because as a, as a growing guitarist, as a guitar player that wants to open up the, the um, frontiers of the neck, you're going to want to be able to read anywhere on the neck. And again, reading is for anyone interested in classical music, jazz music, session work, and really, to be honest, to have a conversation, a musical conversation with 
any other musician besides a guitar player. Because guitar players are the only ones that don't typically read, learn to read music. Bass players, generally, if they're studying bass, they tend to read music. And it's easier for bass players because they only generally have one note to read. Guitar players, we're, we're approaching attacking this today. When you read chords, it's like, oh man, you got to read stacks. Um, and <coughs> that can be difficult. Um, I've got a session today. I, they sent me the music already. Um, some of it's really easy. Uh, okay. But like, here's some. It's not hard. Probably the hardest part of this is going to be the rhythm. Um, looks like mostly just a D and e, D flat. I don't even want this. The voices are irrelevant. I play whatever I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So as we go into, you'll start to see. Um, we'll start to see some um, uh, some th some theoretical benefits, some music theory benefits to to being able to to read these chords. Now, if you look at the very first note, do you know what that is? The very first note on this page, bar one, G. Okay. So you may not be there yet, but let's say uh, the second, the third bar is E. You may have that one down because we've spent several weeks on this reading, and E has been in every one of those lessons. Okay, so when you look at that and you see this, an E, you, you can think this note here. You can think the letter name E. Okay, that is how you're going to start to see these chords. Believe it or not, like I said. A month and a half ago, you, you see that note up there, you would know what it was, right? Now you know it's an E. The note before it, bar two, is a B. The note before that is a G. So we have the three open strings. And you play them all together, and that's E minor. Believe it or not, you're going to look at that uh, E minor shape right there, that E minor triad. You're going to be able to see that at some future date, and you're just going to read it. And you're going to be like, wait, did I just do that? I remember... <laughs> the times, first time I was able to look at a stack of notes and just know, oh, that's just a D minor chord. It's like, so that's where kind of guitar, music theory, and and um, harmony all kind of come into convergence together, okay? Yeah, my Martin's back. And it, look, the pickguard got fixed. See that? That was just one of the things. It was a lot of money. I think, it paid, I, think I spent $500. It had four braces loose, so they had to really do a lot of work with the braces and then they re, they did a setup and a, kind of dressed the frets and everything. So um, I asked for a shim and they didn't, you well, know, they may have, it does look like it's up a little bit. I think there's a shim in there. It's still fretting out on the first. I just have to play softer. It sounds great too. I think I've got the heavy strings on too, which I'm digging. I, got, I, get, I think I, I think <laughs> Elixir sent me a case of them, and somebody stole them off the front porch. I think I had twelve box, not twelve boxes, twelve well, twelve sets of mediums, and um, they sent them to me for free, but <laughs> somebody else got them. I think so, I, never, I never saw them. I, I must, you know, it's just people follow that. UPS truck around and they take stuff off your shirts all the time. Okay, so let's try this. Let's play. We can just break this up into one. We're just going to do one line at a time, okay? So, like doing Coke in the 80s. <laughs> I never did Coke in the 80s. People accuse me of it. A doctor accused me of it. I have a hole in my, in my, uh, in my septum. And the doctor said, did you do coke in the 80s? And I went, no, I just picked my nose a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Anyway, okay. <laughs> More information than you need. So here we go. Ready? This, this first one's super easy. It's just the three open strings, okay? One, two, three, four, G. Two, three, 
four, B, two, three, E, four, two, three, all three, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> yes, it was bad. Okay. Now the next one, well, let's do that again. One, two, three, you don't even need your left hand. Two, three, four, or your fretting hand if you're lefty out there. Four. Two, three, all together. That's an E minor chord. All right? It's an E minor triad, actually. It has an E, a G, and a B. Not in that order. It's actually a second and, or first inversion of E minor chord, but that's irrelevant. I'm just talking about harmony there. Okay, now the next one, you can look ahead, go G, and then it's C. And an E. And here's if you were to see that music, you might go, you might just leave that first finger two, three, four. Leave that first finger there, four. Because you know what's coming. Three, four, two, again, three, G, two, three, four, C on the second string, two, three, open E, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I was a little kid, I was a good picker. <laughs> All right. Now, let's see, uh, next line, bar nine. Open G, open B, and then F. <coughs> so, so essentially we're gonna do that. Again, I'm kind of giving it away here, but this is all right. This is just, just to get you used to seeing the notes individually and then in a stack. Here we go, one, two, three, four. G, two, three, B, two, three, F, two, three, all together, two, good, three, okay, now we're gonna bring in that F sharp, okay? Try not to flip off your audience in the process. Here we go, we got the G, we got the B, two open strings, and then we got the second fret of the th first string, which is F sharp. <laughs> do, what is do? Oh, that's probably a Homer Simpson reference, right? Do! <laughs> so, all right. Um, so here we go, bar 13, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, F sharp, four, two, three, four, and it makes the pretty G major seven chord. Right? There's another way to play it. Color My World is the major Major seventh chords are very pretty. All right, now we have uh, open G again, open B again. So it's pretty. This is pretty simple, I hope. And then we have G on top. And now that's just going to be a pure G chord. Here we go. Ready? Bar seventeen. One, two, three. G. Two open B. Two high G. Two the whole chord. Okay. One more time. G, two, three, four. Two, three, B. Two, three, G. Two, three, four. Okay, look at that. Now look at those, look at those three chords in a row though, the G7, the G major seven, and the G. Can you see, you can see what's happening there, right? You got those open strings. You got that F on top and the F goes to F sharp and then the F sharp goes to G. You have this. It's not particularly common in music to do that kind of movement where you go the major to the major seven to the G seven, uh, but it happens. Um, uh, that's in uh, Desperado. Desperado, they do it. Um, it's not. That's a that's a fairly common. Yes, G seven. Yeah, it's like. In fact, I have a Boston of a book out right now. The, the patterns are crazy. This one is, uh, it's actually. It's not G7, but, but it's a great rhythm that everything's, everything's on the, the 16th notes. So it's really cool. All right. 
Now we're bar, tw bar 21, we've got a new note on the bottom there. Now we, we've having a lot of G's here, now we're gonna play the A. So it's the only other note we've learned on the G string so far. So the second fret, second finger, we have A. And then the next note is C, which is uh, first fret, third, uh, second string, sorry, I'm getting an email from a, a client. And then top string open, okay? And that makes an A minor. So we'll play it together. One, two, A, four. Two, three, C. Two, three, E. Two, all together now. Two, three, four. And look at that, it's a pretty chord, isn't it? It's all those spaces. In fact, if we added the F down here, we'd have F major seven. And it would just be face, F, A, C, E, which is the all the, the letter names of all the spaces of the staff. Okay, but we're not gonna learn that chord because we haven't gotten to the fifth, uh, to the fourth string yet. Uh, but maybe we'll learn that one. Okay. Now let's do that one again. Uh, A, so we're bar 21. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, two, three, four. And if this is baby steps, this is baby playing for you. One thing, another thing you can work on is you can work on getting your finger right up against the fret. Not on the fret, but not way back here. Because here, there's a couple things happening. It would either be buzzy or you have to work way too hard to push it down. No, let the fret do the work. Push the string to the fret. That's as far as you need to go. You don't need to push the string all the way to the wood. In fact, you almost want to get to the point where you have a lighter touch. Um, it'll make your frets last longer, make your fingers last longer, um, and it'll allow you to be faster in the longer. Hey, Catherine's in the house. And Sam, if I didn't say hi to you before, hello. Okay, next, uh, next line is 25. We have an A, a C, and an F. So we're going to have to bar here. We could feasibly do something like this, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and bar our first finger. But to play the first three notes, we don't need to bar because they're just individual notes. So we start with A, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, F, two, and then make them all. But if you want to, you could pre-make the chord, okay, kind of like cheating, but not quite, and just play through them, three, four, Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Okay. Now, technically, uh, letting that A ring past the C note and letting that C note ring past the F note is not what's written. If there was a, a you know, remember that what ties look like? If there was a tie that went over all four bars, then it would mean that. Okay. I probably have some of that in this music. Yeah. So you can see these ties, yeah. see that tie that goes all the way over all those notes? Now I can't let those notes ring out against each other, that's not really possible on the guitar, but what they want that is to, to play as one continuous kind of phrase. Uh, we need flat, or C flat. Um, so there, you know, you gotta find... Anywhere you can let things ring out. You know, that's that may be what they want. I don't know. I'll have to listen to the... the um, they usually have... The, the composers usually put some kind of um, uh, temp track in there where they play, you know, they play it in how they want it to sound. So... Okay. So we did the F. Now let's do the next one. It's... Uh, Bar 29? Yeah, bar 29. I got a light right in my eyes here. But the, that light is for your benefit, so because I love you. Oh. Is it, is it supposed to be hot here on the West Coast? Are we talking about California? Once I ran this morning, it was 60 when I went running. I think we're supposed to hit 90 today, but that's not hot. I, I have yet to turn on my air conditioner. If it hits, if it hits 90, I, my AC won't even turn on. 
my house is so well insulated it doesn't it'll be it'll stay 70 in here 70 it, at the highest it'll get to 80 before you know I said if I'm working a lot my computers and and speakers and stuff make a lot of heat so uh, then I'll turn on the a AC um, but oh oh it, oh Holly it's hot where you are that's funny okay well now where we are I don't know why we're not supposed to we're actually supposed to be in the 70s next week high 72 or something so I don't know we've we've been really mild it's been very cool so far this year normally we would have like two weeks of 100 degree by now but we haven't had anything like that okay so uh bar 29 we have an a and then we have a d and we have an f now you can play d minor that way some people play it with their pinky instead of that just because it's a little stretchy it's a little Trying to get right up against the fret is a little difficult with this, so a lot of people will play with their pinky there. Um, but for for this, I'll I will just play with the proper fingering since we're we're kind of learning the reading and not so much. It's not the applica application. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Bar 29, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, F, 2, 3, 4, and then all three. Okay, let's do it again. Sorry, I went a little faster. Uh, A, 1, 2, A, 4, A, 2, 3, D, 2, 3, F, Two, three, four. Yeah, Holly, you're getting me distracted. Did you buy a system or did you, so you own it outright or did you get like a 30 year lease or something like that on a solar system? See, I didn't, I wouldn't want to do the 30 year lease. I just want to own it. Um, we don't have any south facing, any south facing uh, roof line. And we have, um, we have protected trees all around us, so we can't cut anything down. You know, we have the ET trees, you know, the, the trees that ET, fl they flew up into on the bikes. That's the neighborhood we live in. Okay, so there's D minor, right? Now, if you look at the D minor chord, I mean, you can kind of see, see the D, F, A, okay, again, it's, uh, um, we're not in, you know, Sam and, and John are probably going, nah, it's not root inversion. I know, I'm, I'm just calling it D minor. I'm not gonna call it D minor over A. I'm not, I don't wanna confuse anyone. Technically, that would be considered a second inversion chord because the fifth is in the root, or in the bottom. Yeah, this is, that's, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, we've talked about that stuff before. We don't need to worry about it. We're just talking about the harmony. What chord is it harmonically? Okay, now we're going to bring that F sharp into play. We did it before with the G major seven on bar uh, four, fifteen. Uh, here we got bar thirty three. We got A, um, A, D. We can play second finger, third finger, and second finger. Well, that's not going to work. Now we're going to have to. We can play those individual notes this way. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. F sharp. Two, three, four. Together. It's all very easy, but we could also read it if you wanted to. You play if you were looking ahead. All right, you would you might be play this with the first finger. If you were not looking ahead, you'd see A and you go, okay, A is second finger, and then you see D, okay, that's third finger, and you see F sharp, and that's third second finger, and then you'd see all three of these. And you go, oh shoot, uh, no, that's probably not the best way to do it. You can just do that, okay? So the the finger rules for individual notes kind of go out the door when it comes time to make chords because if you have two notes on the same fret you got to make some accommodation whether it be laying down your finger with F which is fine and in this case we do stick with the the fingering second finger gets a second fret first finger gets the first fret okay but with this one we could bar with our second and put our third but that just makes no sense just just make a D chord <laughs> okay all right and I'm trying to give you not every possible combination of notes we don't hit them all here. I don't even know if I hit them all between the two pages. I don't think, I think I missed a couple. Um, oh, like I didn't do this. I didn't do that one or this one. There were, there were some variations that I didn't do on the second page. Okay, so we have two more lines here and then we'll go to the second page. 
Um, and so uh, bar 37 starts with an A, and then bar 38 is a D, and then a G. And this is one we'll probably use with our pinky, okay? And then if we play them all together, we get D sus that could result in D or D minor. Okay, so that's what D sus looks like. You, you look at that last bar there, bar 40, you have an A, a D, and a G. Okay, stacked fourths, if you think about that. And you can see that it's fourths really easy. Like you can see that the distance from that A note to the D note is the same as that distance from the D note to the G note. That's the beauty of, of music notation versus tab. Tab wouldn't show you that at all. So, I mean, you could you could discern it, but but musically you can really see it there. All right. So uh, let's play this. One, two, A, four. Two, three, four, D. Two, three, four, G. Two, all together, four. Again, two, three, four, A. Two, three, four, D. Two, three, four, G. Two, three, four, all together. Mamba's in the house. AJ's in the house. Sorry, AJ, I didn't see you before. Yeah, there won't be a quiz on these. Everybody take a sip. All right, one more, and we're and then we're moving on to page two. So we're moving pretty quick through this. A late start to the lesson. I didn't start teaching until like nine twenty-two or something. Um, twenty-two minutes in. All right, so we have open G, and then we have the D note at the third fret, and then we have the G note at the third fret. So again, we'll probably do third finger and fourth finger like that, and it's a G five chord, a G power chord. Enough fun. Let's get to the real work. Okay, so we have G. Open G. Two, three, four. Jack Lloyd. Two, three, four. D. Two, three. G on top. Two, three, four. It's kind of like the 2001 Space Odyssey, right? Very majestic. Fifths and majestic. Two, three. Dennis. We have all three moderators now. So much to moderate. <laughs> okay. So there we go. That's the first page. Let me let me get rid of this. And where are you, cursor? Okay, there you are. And let me bring in the next one. All right. All right, now this one, I'm real tempted to, not that I can make it any bigger. Pretty hard to read, um, but if you have it, you if you don't have it, if you don't have a hard copy, um, you can go to the Discord site and download it because it's in the Tom's Lesson Plans thing. Um, Tom's Lessons and PDFs and all that. So you can print it up. Um, I just, it's just, I don't know if it's going to be too small for you to read. Uh, I know you want James Bond theme, but we don't have a C sharp yet. We haven't learned C sharp, but I'll show it to you anyway. Okay, so um, basically we have nothing but half notes here. So rhythmically we have nothing to worry about. We don't have to think. Um, and again, half notes can go by as quickly as the tempo. So you think, oh, half notes are easy. Well, not if the tempo is one, two, three, four, one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, it's there. They're like going by pretty quick. Uh, if the tempo is one, two, Three, four. Then you're looking at two, four. You got plenty of time to kind of look at. Now, basically, what I did for the first you know, almost much of this until I get to the chord changes, I think they don't actually happen until uh, bar 65. Uh, I really only try to change one note per string. Uh, okay, so in other words, if we got an E minor, then I'm, add, I'm adding the C and then I'm adding the D, but the, uh, two of the notes aren't changing. 
Okay, so that's I tried to keep it so that you just had to kind of it was like where's Waldo? Where's the note that's changing? That's what you're looking for in these. All right, um, and that way it's a slow entry into reading stacked triads. Okay. All right. Okay, so we have open. So the, the first chord is, and you can read these out by the one at a time. It's totally fine. All right, that's how you do it. Um, so look, starting at the bottom, we have G, and then B, and an E. Now here's one thing you can notice. With all of these chords, um, the bottom note is going to be a note on the G string. The middle note is going to be a note on the B string, and the top note is going to be a note on the E string. Okay, now, I, if I'm playing it anywhere on a neck or if it's a voice and it's not guitar friendly, it may not always be the case. But in this lesson, 100% of this page is, is laid out that way. All right, the bottom note's always going to be the G. So we can look at the bottom note only of every chord on this page. G, 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 but really, you only have to learn, you only have to recognize two notes on the bottom note. The middle one is either going to be B, C, or D. And, and in the first line, that's all I changed. That was the, the string that changed. Um, on the, on, at 49, you can see it's B straight across. All right? At 53, you can see it's D straight across. Same with 57. Um, and we deviate at 61, we go B, C, B, C, and then it's C straight across. All right? So you, you'll you start to see, like, again, you'll start to recognize things. And then the top note, which is kind of the melody note. If I were to do a chord... See, I'm playing... Uh, an, uh, right here, I'm playing um, a B flat minor 7 chord, but I'm stopping here. I'm not playing, I'm not playing all the way to the top string because the melody is here. So I'm making sure that the melody is the top note of the chord. That keeps the listener... Right? I didn't play the E flat, I just stopped at the C because I wanted the melody to be on top of the chord so the listener knows where I'm going. If I didn't do that, it would be like... So it's... The melody is not as clear there. So when you're reading um, these chord diagrams, know that the, whatever's the top note is probably going to be your pseudo melody note. Uh, but I love harmony movement that happens in the middle. Okay, and this first example is an example of that. We've got some movement. Now, if you want to print, you know, when you print up two copies of this, if you want to sit down and try to figure out the harmony names for this, uh, I would say this is E minor and this is C. I, this could be called a couple different things. E minor seven could be called G6. Uh, it's really not a E minor seven might be the best name for that. I don't know. So, but um, you, I'm, I, yeah, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. The main idea here is to try to read these notes, okay? And um, yes, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit it really hard if you're mad at me. If you really like me, you can hit like and unlike and then like it again so you can like me twice. Hey, John McDonough, what is going on from London? I love London. I hope to be in London next year. I hope I, oops, I don't need that. I'll, I'll wear out the battery. Um, I'm working on a game and they want to record some at Abbey Road. So I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> in fact, the game I'm working on now is going to be at Abbey Road for two weeks, but I'm not, I won't be part of the orchestra. I'm playing on other things. Um, so, but I, yeah, I love London. We stayed, and I'd be tempted to stay there again, uh, but um, uh, what was the name of that movie? That's where we stayed. <laughs> I can't think of it. I'm just going to drive me crazy. Okay. Uh, Julie Roberts and... Anyway, someone's going to hit it right there, I know. Okay, so here we go. First chord is, is G, B, E. Okay, so hit that. Two, four, okay? And then the only thing that changes is the B goes to C. Notice that? Two, four. 
Go to the third fret with the D. So you see the G and the B, or the, I mean the G and the E are the same, and then the back to C. Two, four, okay. Two. I put a repeat sign for every one of these. D, two, four. Notting Hill, four. It's a nice neighborhood. Although I thought, I'm, maybe I'll see if I can crash with the Beckhams in Holland Park. <laughs> uh, I don't think they'll go for that. All right, again, E minor, two, four, C, two, four, two, four, two. Yep, Holly got it. Four. Okay, so that was, so if you, again, you can look, you can practice that. You've already memorized it, right? So the, your ability to read that now is pretty much gone because you probably just memorized it. And that's going to be the trouble with all this because all of this kind of makes sense. But but you, it doesn't matter. When you're playing that, you can still look at those notes. Just stare them down. Look at the change. Look, Move your eye ahead. I know you've already memorized what your left hand is going to do. Okay, now we're at the end. Go look at the first line again. Okay, the first bar. So... You, if nothing else, practice looking at the chords as you play them, but get ahead, too. Practice looking one chord ahead in this case. All right. The next one is same thing. starts with the same chord, E minor. So G, B, and E. And then it adds the, notice the bottom two notes all across here. In fact, you can even look, that, look at that first. All the G stays the same. All the B stays the same. The only thing that happens on top, we can play the top alone. Let's just play the top alone. Watch this. One, two, three, four. Four, E, two, F, four, F sharp, two, G, four, G, two, F sharp, four, F, two, E, four. I'm slouching too much. Okay. Let's try that again. Uh, three, four, E, two, four, two, four, two, four. Two, four. Again, through three, four, two. Now we play them all together. Savoy Hotel. Yeah, is that, that's a really nice hotel, right? Or is that just a famous hotel? I don't know. Um, Abbey Road is is in north, kind of north of London, and it's not too far from. Because we walked back, we walked, we took the train from Notting Hill to Abbey Road, but we took the we walked back from Abbey Road, and I think we walked through the part of of uh, London that had um, Sherlock Holmes's office. Savoy Inn. No, we stayed. In, oh, in Notting Hill, we stayed. We rented an apartment because it was five of us. It was a nice apartment. It was on the under. It was on the below ground floor. But I was amazed at how much light they got in there. Although, although literally the walls and everything was painted hospital white, which was interesting because in America everything is Navajo white or or cafe au lait or something. It's kind of off white. You never do pure white. Um, but because the apartments in London, I think New York is probably more like that too. Uh, but they did a great job of getting light into the apartment. There was like basically a whole, like this apartment, because we were on the bottom, we kind of had a little atrium. Um, and the atrium fed light to two bedrooms and a hallway. So it was actually pretty, pretty, pretty natu good natural light there. So. All right, so the next one is, um, okay, let's look at the notes we have in the next one. All the way across the bottom, we have A's. So we can we know that we're just gonna leave the A finger there, the, uh, the uh, second finger there on the A note. The next line is all D's. The second note from the bottom is all D's. Now you'll notice too, when we have two notes that are a second apart, okay, that they have to be offset, right? You wouldn't, because if you stack those, if I move, like if you look at the bar uh, 47, 
um, if you put that D on the other, on, on, well, I'm, I'm trying to point right for you, on that side of the stem, um, it would be a mush. You wouldn't be able to tell if there was a D or an E there. You wouldn't know. And that's why they flip it over to the other side of the stem. It's really to make it easier to read, and it does. It, first, it looks weird. It's like, what's wrong with this chord? Uh, but it's just a way to be able to have uh, seconds in a chord, okay? And if we go to this chord, we got D, I'm sorry, we got A, D, and F, D minor. The next chord is the same bottom two notes, but the E string is open. And that's a D2 chord. You couldn't have a D2 chord without a second. Uh, but you could call it a D minor two, uh, but there's no third there, so. And then we go back to D minor, and then we go to D sus. So we have the D, I'm sorry, we have the A and the D and the G in bar 56. The writing is so small. Hey, Steve Barry, what's going on? Take care, Mamba. Okay, by the time he says it, oh, 400 pounds a night. Yeah, that's a little on the high side. I paid that much before for, you know, Beth and I go somewhere. Um, that's about $500. It's not cheap. Okay, so we have, uh, I've seen words. My daughter was in London, and I think they paid 1200 a night <laughs> for their room. I looked it up at the hotel they were staying at, and it was 1200 a night. I'm like... It was, she was there for two weeks, too. <laughs> but she was staying with a friend who was there for like four months. <laughs> $1,200 a night. Okay. All right. So, um, so again, so bar 53, we have D minor, and then E changes, and then back to D minor, and then G on top. Okay. So the only thing is, let's play the top line on this one. Bar 53, one, two, three, F, two, four, E, two, F, two, G, two. Well, remind me and I'll tell you the story of why she was staying at a $1,200 a night hotel. Okay. It actually, it was, she, they had a suite. They had two bedrooms and a, and a living room. So that's part of the expense. I forget the name of the hotel, but it was... Right over there by the um, Albert, uh, the, the uh, Prince Albert Museum or something. What, what's it? What's the what's the Pr Prince Albert Hall, Royal Albert? Hall. Oh, the Royal Albert Hall is right over there by that. So it was a very good neighborhood. So and she went to London before I did. Brat, I think she was twelve. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, so let's play all that together. Again, we're not lifting off our second and third finger because it's playing an A and a D. Those are locked in for the duration of this four bar phrase. It's just the top note we're changing, okay? Two, three, four. Two, open. Two, back to the F. And then now G on top here. Back down to F minor, to the D minor, the F. Open E. And then G on top. It's a very common thing to do. Okay. Yeah, she, uh, she was 12. <laughs> she was staying with friends, though. Well, I'll, I'll explain if you stick around. Story time. All right. So the next one, I'm just going to tell you, just it's the same thing, except instead of F natural, we have an F sharp. So consequently, now we have... The only thing missing from this notation is the D string, which would be the, um, the note at the... At, um, the note at the bottom below the staff, but we're not going to get there yet. We, next week we'll learn the D string. Okay. 
And this, I'm not expecting you to be able to sight read this right away. You can just start working on it. But again, you can start looking for similarities in these chords. The further down we get, it, it there'll be less of that similarity across strings. But all of the progressions down here are all pretty well established chord progressions. Okay, um, I think. <laughs> So I kind of try to have fun and do pop progressions mostly at the bottom here. So you can kind of start to see those, how, how they read out. But you can, at that point, you can start to see voice leading. And you can pick one of the notes if you want, and you could sing that note. And that would be kind of the equivalent of singing, choosing the alto part or the tenor part or the soprano part. Right now, we don't have a bass part. I wouldn't say, I would say we don't have a part that a bass, player, a bass singer would sing. Uh, but it, the, everything on the G string is well within the range of a tenor, and everything on the B string is well with, within the range of an alto, and everything on the E string is well within the range of a, of a soprano. So uh, you can kind of think of them as in those terms, and that helps you to see voice movements, okay? And good voice movement is, is the minimal voice movement. Bad voice movement would be... Where everything moves parallel. Uh, you can do that... Things moving a little bit more logically and neighborly, <laughs> to, to use a term. Okay, so bar 37, we have Gary Schultz. Have a good week. Uh, yeah, I think she turned 13 in London, John. I think she turned 13 while she was there. It was a good birthday, let's put it that way. She'll never forget it. Okay, um, so we have a, D, and F sharp, okay? So three, and then we're gonna go A, D, and E. So that's like D2. And we're gonna go back to A, D, and F sharp, and then A, D, and G. Two, three, four. Two, four. Open, two. Back to the second fret. Two, four, and G. You could say this is D chord to D2, back to D, to G, or D sus. All right. All right, now the next line. We have a G on top. You can see that all the way across. Melodically, though, we're going to go E, F, E, F. So this is going to be a little interesting. We're going to have to figure out how to do this. But basically what I did here was I went G to G sus, G to G sus, C to C sus, C to C sus. That's what's happening. All right? So we have G. We have two Gs here. We have a G on the bottom and a G on top. There's no D in this chord. If we were tuned to open G, I could just play the top three strings and we'd be good. But we're not tuned to that. So... Uh, so we have G, B, and G, and then we have G, C, and G, and then back to G, B, and G, and then back to G, C, and G. Okay, then you can leave your first finger there and take off your pinky, and then you have C, uh, G, C, and E, G, C, and F, F. You grab that one with your second finger, or you can lay down, and then you could do, again, only the top note is changing here. Okay, so in the first two bars, the middle note is changing. Uh, the bottom and the top note stay, both are Gs, okay? And then in the next two bars, and this is, so it's getting a little more, a little more involved here. I um, mean, you can, you can slow this way down and do these as half notes if you want. You can go two, three, four, two, three. There's no reason you have to count these as half, half notes. You can count them as whole notes, I'm sorry. Two, three, and then the C shape. Two, add the F. You can bar. Two, three, four. Back to two, three, four, and then two, three. Back to G. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, and then whatever you want to end on there. Okay, 
So that's that phrase. The next phrase, uh, bar 65 through 68, um, yes, exactly, Sam. Uh, yeah, so on, uh, see that you're talking about in uh, 57 and uh, that accidental, that F sharp carries to the end of the bar. But I need to put the F sharp there. So it's, yeah, the, the, it's not red. I was tempted to put a, a sharp sign in parentheses there, but I really, I, I want to train you to start thinking, okay, that F sharp's good to the end of the bar. But that means that by bar, bar 58, because that the accidental in 57 is only good for one bar, bar 58, if there's an F in bar 58 and there's no sharp sign, it's back to F natural. Okay, so those, it's an accidental. It's, it's, a, it's a sharper flat or a natural sign that's contrary to the key. And if you look at the very top left corner, there is no key signature. There's no sharps or flats, which means we're in the key of C. Doesn't mean there's not a key. It just means the key of C has no sharps or flats. So that's what key we're in. So F sharp is not in the key of C, and that's why. So we'll, we're going to get we're going to get the uh, B flat potentially next week. I may show you the B flat, which is a really good note to learn because it's one that's flats are harder to think of to visualize, especially flats of open strings like E flat, B flat, G flat, D flat, things like that. They're they're harder to kind of visualize on the guitar. It's just not natural on piano. They make pianos uh, even a cat can play piano. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly, Sam. Now, however, if I, Sam, if I put uh, an F in the next bar, I might have put a natural sign in parentheses there. That is not uncommon uh, because your temptation is to continue that F sharp throughout the rest of the song, and it's like, nope, that, that, natu that accidental is only good to the end of that bar. Okay, so at bar 65 now, we're to, the, to kind of the quintessential pop chord progression, okay? Ultimately, what we have here is C, A minor, F, G. In other words, a, a one, six, four, five. Okay, uh, but we only have three strings to deal with to imply that harmony. So here's what that looks like. We have G, C, and E. Okay, there's our C chord. Then we have A, C and E, there's our A minor chord. Then we have A, C, and F, which is kind of nice because we're coming from the A minor, we just lay our first finger down and we're golden. Okay? And there's our F chord, the four chord. And I could slide that up to the G chord, but we don't have this B note, so we, we haven't learned this note yet. So, so I'm just going to play this. So we go from this F, play that F for me, and this G. So it's open, open, and third fret. All right? So F, G. You can even practice that. Because that's a, that's a bit of a shift right there. But when you practice that, maybe look at that bar. Look at the last chord of bar 67 and the first chord of bar 68 and back to the last chord. Back and forth. So you start to see the movement. Look at the top notes going up a fret or up a string. I mean, sorry, up a, a pitch. And then the C and the A are both going down a pitch. You see what? See how this can really open up music theory to you too. <clears throat> you can see where now this wouldn't be wrong going to G, but that's all parallel movement. So that means the tenor oh, oh, and the alto oh, oh, and the soprano oh, oh, they're all going to be moving in parallel motion. Kind of. I mean, sometimes you want that. Oh, oh, you want that kind of movement. But sometimes you do. And, and rock is just parallel movement, <laughs> okay? So what used to be considered wrong uh, th theoretically is an entire basis for a, a song, a, a form of music, a style of music. So, so we can't say that parallel movement's wrong uh, anymore because it's so common. Uh, but there's something a little bit more interesting, let's put it that way, in this kind of movement where we have two voices going down and one voice going up. They're, they're spreading apart. They're, it's contrary motion. It's much more interesting than parallel motion. Okay. 
All right, I'll get off my high horse. All right, so bar 65 is a C chord. Two, to the A minor. Two, to the F. Two. And if you want to, you can write these chord names over on a separate printout. All right? Two, four. <laughs> Two. Two, four. Was the cat up? If the cat shows up, you definitely take a drink. That's That can be added to the drinking game. And Gary's not here, but uh, we haven't really talked about the drinking game rules lately. Nobody's doing it. Okay, so that's a 1-6-4 pop progression in, um, in the key of C. All right, another common pop progression would be the A minor, the, the 6, uh, 6, which bar 69 to bar 72, A minor to F to C to G. That's good. So 6 to 4 to 1 to 5. Okay, so if you're looking to be a songwriter, uh, that's another tool in your toolbox, that progression. You want to have a lot of, if you're writing songs, you want to have a lot of different chord progressions you can call from. Um, and those will inspire different melodies and make your songs more interesting than having the same chord in every. I mean, blues songs are the same progression, so it doesn't necessarily mean you can't do it. But um, Okay, so bar 69, we have A minor, so we have A, C, E. And we go to F, which is just laying down the first finger. We get that F note. And now if we look from F to the C, we can see, okay, the top note goes down and the bottom note goes down, but the middle note stays the same. Okay, we go from C to this G. We're gonna, we're gonna, this, uh, the G is gonna stay the same. The C is gonna go down to, to B, and the E is gonna go way up to G, like that. And we end up with this progression: sixty-nine, two, four. Lay down the finger. Two. See that C chord? You should start to recognize that C chord. Two. Two. Oh, wait, I messed up, sorry. G, two, I just skipped down. Again, A minor, two. There's, move up, there's that F note up there on top. This is an F chord, and then here's the C shape. We'll C triad, and then to the G, two. Again, one more time, A minor, two. Top three strings, there we go. The C, just the first finger on the C note. And then now just the G note on top. All right. So there's a, the harmony essentially is six, four, one, five. Very common in pop music. Particularly in the 90s, that was a very common. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to do a four, five, one, A minor. So that'd be cool. Nepal, that's so amazing. I can't believe I'm on in Nepal. I'm big in Nepal. Hopefully I'm not butchering the name of your country or your first name. <laughs> Sorry. Kumar Maski. Ramesh Kumar Maski. All right, so... Uh, now, uh, what's today? Wednesday? Yeah, duh. It's Wednesday. Of course it's Wednesday. Okay, so let's look at that progression. So we have the F, we start right off with the hard, the hard chord, with the bar, laying down the first finger on the C and the F, and then getting that A there. So look at bar 73 down there, okay, we're five lines from the bottom, we're almost done. And then I'll tell the story, okay. Now, uh, then you go to G. Open G, open B, and G on top. So this one might be a good one to practice changing between, just back and forth between those two chords. But when you do it, just go ahead and look at look at them on the music, so you can start to maybe ingrain once, because like that G chord, that G chord right there in bar 74, that one looks so different than so many of the other. That some of these look a lot alike, right? Like A minor and, a and C kind of look alike. But that G chord, that G voicing there, and that's just one way we could do it. Um, is is pretty unique looking. So you see that, you might automatically right go to it. And that's what I'm saying. 
eventually your ability to um, your ability to read chord stacks will be as quick as your ability to read a single note. You'll see it just like you see that as G, that that line on the staff. You'll see that is a G chord, okay? Or is this is this shape, whatever. All right, that actually is really difficult anywhere else. Well, not not here, but but it's pretty easy down here in first position. Okay. So, and then the next chord after that G is the C, and then the A minor. And again, you look at the A minor, to the C to A minor, and you notice there's only one note difference between C and A minor, and that also, boom, that starts getting into your head, like, wait a minute, theory-wise, C and A minor, really, oh, oh, A minor is a substitution for C, and C is a substitution for A minor. So, again, you'll start to see, in, in music notation, it's a lot easier to see than in tab. Um, and so, uh, so that's where, you know, I get kind of excited. <laughs> I'm overly excited. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing every Wednesday now, Ramesh. Uh, uh, I uh, used to do <laughs> seven days a week, but that lasted 62 days, 61 days, something like that. Yes, we'll be, you'll be able to read on site. Okay. Um, and, and chords are harder to read than notes. That's kind of why so many bass players learn to read because they don't have to read notes. They only have, they don't uh, they don't have to read chords. They only have to read notes. Piano players have to do both. Guitar players have to be able to do both. Nobody else really does. Violin eh, occasionally they'll have two notes, but they can't play more than two notes because their their strings are arched. So the bow can't reach three strings at once. I mean, if you push really hard on the bow, you can push that middle string down and hit three. It's extreme example. Uh, for the most part, though, the only people reading stacked chords are guitar players and piano players. Um, so it can definitely be a challenge and it's not something that comes natural to guitar and, uh, but there's nothing particularly difficult about these voicings to play. Okay, so set bar 73 of F, two, to the G shape, two, to C. And again, that may, may be one you've seen so much now that you can recognize on sight. A minor again F notice F to A minor is only one note difference or A minor to F same thing C so I'm playing bar 73 to the repeat sign A minor F two four two four two four Zach G, C, C triad there, and then we just add that A note, we get A minor triad. Okay, good. Okay, now this next progression, what did I do here? I went G to E minor to, okay, we're in, a, we're in the key of, um, we're in the key of G now, all right? So because we're, we're bringing in that accidental, that F sharp, which again lasts to the end of that bar, um, we have G to basically E minor to basically C to basically D, so I'm taking the most common pop progression, one, six, four, five, in the key of G. All right. We're taking that very, very common chord progression, one, six, four, five in the key of G, and we're putting it here, right here on the on the on the staff. Okay, so we start out with G, and that's the one I just said you should be able to recognize that one because it's so weird looking compared to all the others. Zach's a very good guitar player, professional guitar player in the Chicago area. He's tuning in just to say hi. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to learn anything, Zach. Oh, I'm in Gardner's here again. I thought they were going to start coming on Fridays. The heck? All right. Um, let's see. So, bar 77, we have the G. Oops, there we go. And then all open, which is E minor. And then the difference between E minor and C is just one note. B goes to C. And then this is one where we're here. We're actually using parallel movement. After I gave you the big speech about not using parallel movement, we're going C. See, we're zero one zero. 
now we're going two, three, two. All right. Angel in the morning. Why did I hear Angel in the morning all of a sudden? Okay, I think it's in the key of G actually. No, that's true, Zach. You I, you can learn in anything. That's true. I've learned a lot of stuff from beginner guitar players. Okay. Um, so we have G on top, and then we go all three open, two, and then C in the middle. And this one's just you just have to memorize this one. A. D and F sharp. Everything moved up a whole step. So if you look at each individual note, the G goes to the A, that's a whole step. Uh, C goes to D, that's a whole step. E goes to F sharp, that's a whole step. So if you just imagine, we just we just took everything up two frets. Okay. One fret, two frets. Okay. All right, so we have... Two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, G, two, E minor, all open. Just add the first finger. Two, four, and play a D. Now again, just try to play the top three strings. I just want you to see those those movements and learn that that's all we've learned is the top three strings so on a D chord don't play the D string or the A string one more time E minor now after this let's see okay then the next one I do same three same four chords uh, we start on the E minor we go to C we go to G and then D so I'm doing the more 90s pop Chord progression. Instead of the one six four five, we're going to go six six four one five. Uh, so it's okay. So that's the harmonic movement that's going on here. We have one the sixth chord, which is E minor. Again, we're in the key of G. First clue is we have an F sharp there. So here's the sixth chord in the key of G. Oh, has Bruce been to... Um, okay, so we have... Uh, so we're bar... What is that? 81? Yeah, hard to read those. That font. Okay, so two E minors to C. And then to the G chord. I don't know, are you guys starting to see some of these voices? Like, you look at it and you recognize it, E minor. And that's an easy change going from D to E minor, then to C, to G, to a D shape, basically. E minor. Open. To C. Okay, good. Now the next chord progression I did was uh, G to D, F to C. So it's kind of this, the bass line might be kind of a fun pop thing. So this is an example where we actually modulate the keys in the progression. Technically, the first two bars were in the key of G, and the next two bars we could call ourselves. We could say we're in the key of F, or you could say you're in the key of C. Both would be correct. Also, you could say technically you're in the key of D there, but because we're only playing two chords, you can't really tell what key you are unless you're playing the four and the five. You can't really tell what key you're in um, with just two chords a lot of times. I'm curious how many times if you had just which two chords would give away a key. So if you had C and E minor, that could still be the key of G. If you had C and D minor, that could be the key of F. 
If you had C and F, that could be the key of F. If you had C and G, that could be the key of G. If you had C and D, that could only be the key of G. So it's, I think it's the four and five are the only ones that can do that. Um, yeah, it's a very Lannis Moore set. Kind of vibe, very, very 90s kind of thing. Um, and so that's what's happening here. We got G to the D. And a pretty tough change to the F to the C. But just look at that, G, F, I'm sorry, D, to the F. Going from the C to the G, we have the bottom note stays the same. But we have, we have contrary voice movement there. The C is going down to B and the E is going up to G, okay? Then on the D, going from the G shape here to the D shape, um, we have the G goes down to F sharp, the, a, the G goes up to A, and so there's contrary movement, and the, D, uh, the open B goes way up to D. So we have a lot of movement in this one. Going from the D to the F, the, the only note that stays the same is the A. And it's almost like you're going from D to D minor 7 or something, but that's an F triad. And then the C. Okay, so we have G to, to a, D to F to C. G. Okay, F. Okay, the last one is not too hard. I just went G to G major 7 to E minor to C, which is kind of a pretty chord progression. With an easy one. So your goal, your 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 challenge is to try to get to the point where you can start to recognize most, if not all, of these triad shapes and and play them in the open in open position. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, okay. I'm going to tell you a story in a second, but I'm going to go talk to the gardener right now and find out why they're not working on Fridays because I thought they were going to change. So give me one minute, and then I will. Uh, I'll be right back. So practice. Start reading. Start reading some of those.
All right, sorry. View count always goes up when I leave the room, so that's why I really did that. <laughs> we were like, where is time? Oh, it actually went down. Well, that's good. I'm actually happy that it went down. Uh, let's see. Okay, you all are talking amongst yourselves because I was left the room. I, I totally... <laughs> Yeah, first world issues, right? I know, I totally should do that. I need, I need to like, have like, I should do, I should come up with, I, could, I should just let my phone go. Whatever. So, uh, I could totally have done that. All right. So, enough of making your brains work. Yeah, I don't think I told this story before. Where's Diane? Is it Was it Diana that always wanted the stories? Let me go back to full screen mode here. Oh, I can turn this off. Get this out of my face. See, this is what I've been looking at. Um, for your benefit. There we go. So, yeah, my... Uh, Daughter's best friend is a girl named Abigail Hargrove, and Hargrove's is uh, some friends of ours from Texas. A lot of people moved to LA uh, to to with their kids because the kid kid acting kind of thing, right? Everybody, you know, not everybody, uh, but there's uh, you know probably at any one time ten thousand kids that are living in, you know, here with their parents, one of their parents in an apartment in Los Angeles because they're going on auditions or whatever. Uh, this whole family moved and every one of the kids probably did something. I think every one of them were in a commercial or a TV show or something at some point. They, all, they have five girls. And um, Abby was the youngest and she got um, a role in... Um, the movie World War Z. Did you ever see World War Z with Brad Pitt? He played. She played Brad Pitt's oldest daughter in the movie, and um, so they were in England filming for about three months, something like that. Um, and so they were in London filming, and um, they. Uh, basically went, um, so they were supposed to be there, I think three months and it got extended to four months as these things tend to do. And Emma was really missing Abigail, her best friend. And, um, um, the, uh, so the Abigail's sisters were going to go visit. So Abigail had a suite. Her dad had one, um, room and she had the other bedroom. And then there was a a common room, uh, like a, a in the, it, I don't know what the hotel, oh man, well it's a good time for story time because our streaming has dropped, we might be buffering a little bit, well now it's up over 3,000, that's weird, okay, um, so, uh, so I, I agreed to fly Emma, uh, to London with two, because two of her sisters were going to fly out to visit her. To Abigail in London for a couple weeks, so we um, we went ahead and flew him out because that was the only cost really. I gave her money for food and stuff, um, but she she was on set most days. Um, yeah, that's and that's the that's who paid the bill, Sam. Uh, basically, it was the studios that paid the bill because she was. She was one of the main actors in the movie, and they, and so Emma was on set several times. She met Brad Pitt. Um, Brad kind of almost kind of interviewed my daughter because he wanted to make sure, you know, being a celebrity is hard. It's hard to know who your real friends are. So um, uh, he was kind of grilling Emma like how, oh, thanks, Lena. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Buy a ticket for stories. Uh he kind of wanted to know, you know, if she, I forget what, what was the question he asked Abigail and within literally two seconds, 
Brad knew that Emma was a real friend. <laughs> so I forget what it was. But uh, so Brad and Emma met Angelina Jolie. She was there too. Um, she wasn't in the movie. Um, the, the woman that played the mom, um, what's her name? Uh, I, I have to look it up. Um, she was super nice. In fact, she had a baby. And I think Emma babysat for them. Um, and her husband was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, was Ferris Bueller's friend, kind of the friend with a rich dad. That who is who she's married to. Um, where's IMDb? Here it is. Oh, I haven't updated my IMDb in a while. i got to work on that. Um, Uh-oh. Oh, we're good. I'm so, I thought the internet was down. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true, Catherine. You don't have to be a celebrity. Uh, but they do. celebrities do tend to be very protective of each other. Um, oh, Murray. Murray Enos. Yeah. So she's a great actress, too. Um, the funny thing is, is that they've talked about doing a sequel. They've even had meetings and like even with uh and and abigail's still here but she's see emma's 23 so she must be 22 years old now so abigail's much older now than she was when they did this movie back in 2012 or something um and um <clears throat> but emma got to go on set a couple of times Boy, she said it was cold some of the sets they went to like outside sets and things like that and some of the places and then uh, so Marae Enos was the mom, and Emma babysat at the hotel so she and her husband could go out. Uh, her husband is, uh, let's see, what was, does it say? Um, uh, seems like a real nice guy. Uh, Oh, Mayor Alan Ruck, that's his name. He was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's kind of what I know him from. Um, and then, um, so it, she got to, you know, she got to, like, hang out on set, because what else was she going to She just basically went wherever Abigail went. Uh, but Abigail is now, I think, 6'2". <laughs> All the girls in that family are, like, in the high fives. But Abigail, the youngest, ended up being, now she, she's probably 6'1 now. She's probably not 6'2", but she's taller than I am. Uh, she was here last Christmas um, with everybody, with with many of the, the Hargroves. Um, I think they were over last Christmas. Um, usually they come over for Christmas and Thanksgiving. We usually host everybody. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty fun trip for Emma. She was in London for two weeks. I think they flew. I put her up. I paid coach. So I, I but I, I think... Of course, Emma, Abigail did, was already there, so she didn't fly with Abigail. But she didn't fly by herself. She flew with Abby's older, two of her older sisters. So it wasn't like we we, we were worried, but not that worried. In fact, I w we were both worried that Emma was going to be homesick. And this was kind of, right, well, you, um, FaceTime has been around for a while. But um, she... Um, Abigail, uh, so, but we FaceTimed her. She, Abigail, I guess, had an iPad. And so we FaceTimed, and I thought Emma was going to cry or something, but Emma was like, oh, hey, hey, Mom and Daddy, I'll see you later. <laughs> it's just, and so one of the things that this hotel was super bougie. Um, I can't, I can't remember the name of the hotel, but uh, the, the hotel was, um, Super bougie. One of the things they did was they put truffles on your pillow at night, right? So every every night when you go to your room, you'd have a truffle sitting there, you know. And these were like nice truffles, you know. And uh, <laughs> so a Emma and Abby somehow found like all these secret passageways at the hotel, like these doors that led to places and closets and and uh, cabinets that opened up and uh, all that kind of stuff that would lead to other places. And so what they would do is they would follow the uh, the maids around, and when the maids went into apartment, they uh, went into a, a room 
to clean, and they would leave their cart in the hallway, and the girls would raid the carts for for those uh, truffles. So they they had like a hundred truffles in their room. <laughs> they were just dying because they were eating so many truffles. And, oh my gosh! And they brought a bunch home. It was really funny. But Ramesh, good to see you. Good night from Nepal. Yes, that's amazing. I'm big in Nepal. Who knew? So, yeah, so that was a pretty cool story. She, you know, memories that she'll have for the rest of her life. Um, and she said Brad was cool. You know, Brad was a nice guy. So it's good to know. Um, but uh, anyway, that's so that's the latest. Google says Alan Ruck. <laughs> yeah, it's Alan Ruck. Yeah, if you probably don't know that name, but if you if you Google the face, you go, oh, that guy. Because he's been in a lot of stuff, so truffle hunters, exactly. <laughs> they were pretty funny. Those girls were pretty funny together. Uh, you know, now Emma lives in Missouri, and Abigail's still out here. Abigail's playing, is going to college and on the team for volleyball, which makes complete sense. Uh, I'm not sure what they would do if uh, <laughs> they ended up making a sequel. I don't know that Abby could do it, because she'd be taller than Brad. Because <laughs> I think Brad's the same height as I am. So that, you know, they could dig a trench for her to walk in or have her sitting down everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, truffles are good. I think these were nice ones too. They were probably not cheap knowing this hotel. Um, but yeah, and, the, and like I said, it was, uh, the, the hotel was something like 1200 bucks a night because I looked it up, uh, her room, and it was not cheap, but they weren't paying for it. And it was, uh, so it was pretty cool. She still makes residuals from that because they still air that movie quite a bit. So she makes money. She'll make money on that movie maybe her whole life. I don't know. If she lives to be 100, maybe not. Are we watching any movies from 90 years ago? Not really. Um, but, um, but you know, at least for the short term, it, it will be. She's not really – I don't think she's going on auditions anymore. Again, the height thing is really issue for, for girls. So if, you, if you're too tall – I guess that's, I would say the same is for true for guys, because guys can be too tall, too. I think really tall guys don't tend to get acting roles. Uh, most actors are tend to be pretty short, like Tom Cruise, and those guys all tend to be, you know, 5'7", five, 5'8", you know, five, five, something like that. So, oh, she, yeah, but but I, I she's taller than that now. That was probably the last time they entered anything in IMDb. Uh and she wasn't 5'10 in that movie, though. So they've updated it at least once. And there she is. Yeah, that's a very old picture of her. Um, so she born in 99. So she's a, two years younger than Emma. Emma was born in 97. Well, the end of 97. So they're about a year and a half apart. Yeah, she hasn't done anything in a long, really hasn't done hardly anything. So, yeah, that, that that was, I think, you know, if they were to do a remake, I mean, not a remake, if they were to do a sequel, I don't know if she would even be part of it. Because um, it did play, the kid thing played a role, especially at the beginning of the movie. It's a good movie. It's fun. Um, but... Uh, I don't know that a sequel would necessarily need to have his relationship with his grown daughters in it, you know, um, or they, they could appear in it and maybe not be, you know, they could be off at of college and not even be in the same scene with Brad. Um, but I don't know. Brad is how tall. Um, and then Murray, how tall is she? Would they have a kid that tall? Cause Gary and Gary and Jody aren't that, aren't that tall, but all five of their girls are tall. So it's just, and they all they all totally look related. Okay, Brad Pitt. Let's see. Murray Enos. I don't know if it'll oh, she's only five two. Yeah, so it would make zero sense for a five two woman and a how tall is Brad Pitt? From Oklahoma. Five eleven. So five two and five eleven. See, my kids are tall because Beth is five ten and I'm five eleven. So Beth's dad was 6'8", and her brothers were 6'2", 6'3", and 6'4". She's the shortest at 5'10". One sister was 
five eleven, and the other sister was six feet. So she's definitely, um, but the kids definitely got their height from my or Beth's side of the family, and they're smarts and they're good looks. I, they didn't really get anything from me. <laughs> uh, in fact, the mailman was tall. I'm just kidding. Yeah, so yeah, so she's she's taller than Brad Pitt now. She's at least six feet tall now. And <laughs> she'd be mortified that we're talking about her. <laughs> Poor Abigail. Uh, but they're like family, really. Particularly for many of the years, you know, obviously they're like family or else we wouldn't have allowed our daughter to go off to London. But, you know, not they moved back to to Texas. Um, there's um, Uh, there's basically, um, you know, less opportunities to gather together, less reasons to. So that's true of everybody in seasons of life and stuff like that. But, you know, when they left California, that definitely kind of slowed down. But I, of the five girls, one, one married Alex's best friend. Um, let's see. And they're in Pasadena. So she's one. And then there's another one in LA and Abigail. So there's three of the five girls are here. So <laughs> yeah. So the so yeah, the, the kids got my uh, dimple. So that's one of the genes. <laughs> um coffee gene, is there a coffee gene? Coffee liking gene? But Richard Lawson jumps in. <laughs> yeah, we're all done with the lesson. We did. We did uh, Corsac. So go to go to the go to the. Uh, I've got the Discord link up there pinned, and we did this stuff. So that looks like crazy stuff. But I think for some of you, it's actually starting to like make some sense and start starting to look like something. Like I said, I wish I could have made it like that big, but then you would be able to see my hand. No, actually, maybe yeah, you could. I don't know. So I just made it this big. So anyway, I'm going to sign off. Um, great seeing you all. <laughs> you you were five seven now. You're five five. Well, yeah, definitely. Beth is not long, no longer five ten. She's probably five nine, five nine now. I, I'm probably not. I was five eleven and a half. I almost made it to six feet. Almost exactly the same size height as my father. But Jack and Alex are both six four. So Emma didn't get the height though. She wanted to be tall, but she didn't because all her because of the hard grows, I think. So she's kind of in that mid range, like five six or something, five seven. Um. <laughs> you're you're fine. So they added some height to you. That's good. Yeah, thank you, Holly, for moderating and all that. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Um, this lesson will be up there. Hopefully, it was helpful. <laughs> and um, next week we'll add the D string. So we'll end, now we'll be reading on four strings. Maybe I don't know. I, yeah, I think I will. It may end up being another two-page lesson, but I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it simple and just do the D string and the G string or something like that. And maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe just about the three strings and not bring in the E string. I don't. Know. You know, I, I like to build on what we've our knowledge base, but it's it can get so big what I feel obligated to do that it may get too hard. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we'll see what happens. But um, for now, I, I haven't really come up with a plan for how to introduce the next string. Um, anyway. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Ooh, you a broken neck. Dang, Joseph. that That's not good. Six feet. And then, so you lost two inches. Holy cow. Platform shoes. I remember I had a pair of platform shoes back in the day. Remember, I, I was playing disco bands in the 70s. So, Everybody have a great week. I will see you in a great week and weekend, and I will see you hopefully next Wednesday. God bless you all. Bye-bye.